There was an explosion in the parking lot of Al Ali Arab Hospital yesterday, and a number of people asked me to take a look and analyze a thing. Well, you know that old saying about uh, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man a fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Well, let's learn how to fish today. I'm going to show you how to look at this explosion, and the best part is that I don't have to show a single photo or video. A couple of things to start. Um, I was in meetings all day yesterday at a location in Virginia. Uh, other stuff is going on in the world, and in order to maintain certain uh, security credentials and relationships, I have to attend certain kinds of meetings. Um, so, just, just one request. Um, before you send me an email, just check my Twitter to see what I'm up to. I'm pretty easy to find, at Ryan Macbeth. Uh, I get uh, at least 200 emails yesterday, and they all said the same thing. And I can't get back to anyone. I guarantee you, if something big is going on in the world, I am tracking it. Um, now, before I start anything, uh, I'm going to be using ICD-203, the standard for determining probability when dealing with intelligence. So, a couple of things to start for background. Back when I was in Iraq, there was this IP or Iraqi policeman who told me a joke. And the joke kind of went like this. Uh, Nouri al-Maliki, who was the uh, Prime Minister of Iraq, uh, he was in a conference with all of his ministers around a conference table. And his phone rings, and it's his wife. And his wife says, honey, help me, there's a thief in the house. And Nouri al-Maliki responds, impossible, they're all still here with me. <laughs> and what, what's kind of funny about that joke is that a lot of people in the Arab world live in this culture where corruption is the norm to the point where they make jokes about it because what, what, what else are they going to do? Their government lies to them. The government knows that they're lying. The people know the government is lying. The government knows that the people know that they're lying and they're still lying. So imagine how hard it is for anyone who lives in one of these governments to trust any kind of government. So it's really easy for a person who lives in the Arab world to hear and then believe that Israel would intentionally bomb a hospital. Because of course Israel lies. My government lies. Why wouldn't Israel's government lie? But the problem is that Israel is a democracy. So the leaders there are held accountable to their people. And there's a free press. So if somebody is lying, I guarantee you a journalist who wants to win a Pulitzer will find out about this. <laughs> you know, there's, I've met a lot of journalists while doing this YouTube thing. And uh, I think a journalist would sell out their mother if they think uh, they would get a story and, and, and win a Pulitzer Prize. So uh, kind of keep that in mind going forward. There is accountability when it comes to Israel's government. Whether you like Israel's government or not, that government can be unelected if the people don't do what they want them to do. <clears throat> but Hamas isn't accountable to anyone. They haven't had elections since the mid-2000s. Hamas is essentially the government of the West Bank. Hamas is the Palestinian Health Service, the, the original group that reported the strike. Uh, Hamas has the Qassam military arm that launches rockets and raids into Israel. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's quite a few Palestinians who have no love for Israel, but they hate Hamas. And what, what can you do? Hamas is in charge and they have all the guns. Now Hamas can lie all it wants and there's really no free press to call them out on the lies. And in a way it's actually disincentivized to tell the truth because lying has kept them in power for quite a few years and there's no consequences if they're caught in a lie. So let's look at probabilities using ICD-203 with four possible scenarios. Number one, Israel intentionally bombing that hospital. Number two, Israel accidentally bombing that hospital. Number three, Hamas intentionally attacking that hospital. And number four, Hamas accidentally attacking that hospital. So let's start with number one, Israel intentionally attacking the hospital. Let's look at the probabilities here. For the most part, Israel is working with JDAM, Paveway, and small diameter bombs. These are all laser guided bombs or satellite guided bombs. The smallest bomb is about 200 pounds or 90 kilos. So any kind of bomb that size is going to leave a crater. So you need to ask yourself this, does Israel know the location of every single hospital in Gaza? So look at ICD-203 and ask yourself whether it is likely, unlikely, or whatever that Israel knows the location of every single hospital in Gaza. So this couldn't have been like a mistake. 
Does Israel have a history of attacking hospitals? Take a look at the sheet. Would Israel bomb a hospital if they thought there was a tactical benefit? Like, let's say there was a bad guy they really wanted to hit. But if there wasn't a bad guy, what's the gain? Israel has the sympathy of the entire world right now. Would they gain more or lose more from attacking a hospital? Is the damage consistent with the kind of munition that Israel has in its inventory? And finally, what are the consequences if Israel lies? So take everything I said and then score it on this matrix. Now let's look at number two. Could Israel have accidentally bombed the hospital? Like, could this have been a weapon that went off course? The circular error probability of a JDAM, Joint Direct Attack Munition, is about a five meter circle. The circular error probability of the Paveway Laser Guided Bomb is about a one meter circle, like 1.1. So is it likely that Hamas could have used jammers to uh, send one of these satellite guided bombs off course and it accidentally hits the hospital? Is it uh, possible that there were any infrastructure targets that were in the area that Israel intended to hit and one of these weapons went off course? What are the consequences if Israel lies about accidentally hitting the hospital when they were hitting something else. So take up everything that I just told you and score it using ICD-203. Number three, could Hamas have intentionally attacked the hospital? All right, does Hamas control hospital security and administration? Well, apparently this explosion occurred in the parking lot. Would they have security people in the parking lot that are on the Hamas payroll? Does Hamas have anything to gain from blowing up that hospital? Could Hamas gain world sympathy if there was an explosion at one of their hospitals and they could blame it on Israel? Does Hamas have the ability to make rockets and explosives? What are the consequences if Hamas is caught in a lie about attacking its own hospital or accidentally hitting its own hospital? Is the damage consistent with a lighter weight rocket or car bomb? Let's take everything that I said and score it. Finally, number four, could Hamas have accidentally hit the hospital? All right, let's go through this. Does Hamas have the ability to make rockets and explosives? Have rockets that have been fired by Hamas have landed in Gaza instead of going all the way to Israel? Like, What is the failure rate of these rockets and have they landed in Gaza before? Was there a rocket attack going on when the explosion occurred? How close is the hospital to the border with Israel? Yeah, right now, the hospital's kind of in the middle of Gaza. So really, all you kind of need to do is figure out the range of the kinds of rockets that Hamas fires, which in this case, it, it could be a Qassam rocket, which has a range of about 16 kilometers. So just draw a 16 kilometer circle around that hospital. And if a Qassam rocket, Qassam 3, was used, then that rocket must have come from inside of that circle. Inside that circle, look for any kinds of places where there might be parks or there might be uh, fruit trees or uh, farm fields or even uh, like large backyards where you could launch a rocket from that might go over that hospital on the way to Israel. So kind of figure that out. Take everything that I said and score it. Now, there are a couple of outliers. You know, accidents happen during wartime too. A forklift could have dropped a propane tank that set off a cascade of explosions. Uh, somebody could have been trying to steal gas by puncturing the gas tank of a car with a nail and boom, right? But those are outliers. You know, there's an old saying in medicine that if you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. So for a moment, forget about video and audio. A lot of that stuff can be faked. What can't be faked is who benefits, what can't be faked are the systems possessed by each party in the conflict. Um, and what can't be faked is the likelihood that a particular party would lie. So let me know in the comments below what your score for each possibility is. And thank you guys so much for watching.